Through various media and in various ways, we have been driven to the brink of despairing over ourselves, giving up on our country and on its institutions. This is the destructive, self-deprecatory rut into which we have fallen. Ituid Natin has sought to introduce perspective into what have often been myopic perspectives, rational discourse where hysteria and mere rhetoric have held sway. Corruption is a charge that has frequently and vehemently been hurled against the present administration. I do not intend to deny that corruption is rife on many levels of government, but it is most certainly wrong to lay all the blame at the doorstep of one president, one administration. In my childhood, I was told the scandalous story of the golden Urinola at the time of President Quirino. Then we were regaled by the display of a thousand and one shoes. This was followed by angry protests against the oligopoly of the Kamag Anak Incorporated. And then we were treated to salacious talk about misappropriated funds in relation to the Centennial Expo. Aside from what was labeled the grandmother of all scams, the PEA Amari Deal. The nation witnessed the conviction of a former president for plunder, and the present government has found itself embroiled in several accusations of corruption. The point is not that we must now resign ourselves to corruption, definitely not. The point rather is to recognize that the problem has been perennial, although establishing guilt and culpability have been quite a distinct matter. It is also interesting to note that for all the serious charges leveled against various presidents, only one has been convicted in proper proceedings. Many times our reactions are visceral rather than rational. When Jun Lozada cried his heart out to sympathetic religious, whom I do not in the least blame for their sympathy, and claimed that an attempt was made to enforce his disappearance, he sought the protection of the Court of Appeals. But the court, after listening to evidence and judiciously examining evidence, roundly and surely rejected him. Are we prepared to dismiss the court's findings as erroneous? But the moment we become dismissive of findings of our courts, where do we turn to? To the media? But these are businesses, gigantic in expense, protected by those whose faces we see and voices we hear each day. The world suffered a terrible economic crunch. The U.S. went into recession. And even Dubai, once awash in cash and promise, faced its creditors empty-handed. Things were difficult for us in the Philippines, and they still are. But we never really went into recession. Should we not be grateful for that? And should some credit at least not go to the president who hardly anyone will deny, has the academic credentials for the highest position of the land. When she presided over the meeting of the Security Council with confidence and with adequacy and with effectiveness, when she secured the release of fellow Filipinos sentenced to death in different countries, did we ever congratulate her for these achievements? You know, I cringe whenever bigots call the president a fake president. Why fake? Her assumption of office after President Erap's resignation was upheld by the Supreme Court in Estrada versus Bacapagal Arroyo. And her victory over FPJ was never controverted by judicially acceptable evidence. And if she is fake, does it not follow that all her acts 
signing bills into law, granting presidential pardons, appointing officials, ordering the release of funds, are totally bereft of legality and are resultantly null. And yet, from all these, we have all profited. Are we prepared for such a consequence? It is sad that one presidential aspirant has chosen to campaign on the promise of jailing his predecessor. That is truly pathetic. For it speaks ill of a person, and ogres ill for his leadership, to rest his agenda on vengeance. That is one of our ills. Every new administration attempts to wipe the slate clean with the result that all the good thus far achieved is consigned to oblivion and we are left with hardly any institutional memory and must grope our way through governance once again. Since when have we forgotten to be grateful? And why have we become a nation of flagellants, beating ourselves to pulp and failing to see promise in our genius, creativity, perseverance as a people? Lent has one message. God never gave up on us. We have no right giving up on ourselves. That has been the advocacy of ituwid natin. For too long now, we have listened to the worst about ourselves and believed the worst about ourselves. But we must believe in ourselves because several times in our history, we have shown ourselves capable of greatness. We must believe in ourselves because God believes in us. That is what Ituid Natin is all about.